This is a controversial subject. Hi, so um, I haven't seen you guys for a while. And I just thought that I put a shout out before for some questions about anything menopause. And so I thought I'd answer what I can. I basically want to do a quick caveat to say that I am not a doctor. I'm just a woman that knows quite a lot about the menopause and about my own experience of menopause and symptoms and medications and I've made a documentary I guess so I know a bit through that. I've read a lot and I've informed myself but there are lots of questions here that I can give a steer to. So I've got my computer in front of me, I've got lots of names of people that have asked questions. This isn't sponsored by Apple by the way. And um, I am going to read them out. So. Lanade Hoffman says, how long do you rub in the Estragel? I rub mine in for 30 seconds and then let, let it dry for three to four minutes. Should I rub it in until it's completely absorbed? This is a controversial subject. So the Estragel, I've heard people kind of say, you've got to dab it on and leave it to dry. But I don't know about you, I, I'm actually on a patch and one sort of, or just less than one pump of estrogel on my arm. So I only have one. So I kind of rub it in a little bit like that and then I go like that and then I leave it to dry while I brush my teeth. And while I, after I've brushed my teeth, I brush my teeth for two minutes, it's done. However, I have got mates who are pumping six pumps of estrogel onto their arms and walking around like this for ages. So it's really hard to know, but she has her levels checked and her estrogen levels are fine. So I guess if you're getting your estrogen levels fine and you're getting them checked and they're okay, then keep doing what you're doing. I think they do say don't kind of rub it in. I'm not sure why that is. I think that Dr. Louise Newson is doing a bit of research on that to find out if there's a right and a wrong way to take it. But Lenaid, you hit a nerve there because that is a contentious issue. Sandra Hardy says, thanks for uploading this Davina. I've been suffering with low mood, mood swings and all the other awful symptoms that come with perimenopause and started HRT a week ago because of watching your documentary. Still waiting for the patches to kick in. Just can't believe how much women do not even want to talk about it. Only women feeling the same or going through the same are willing to talk about this. It's so frustrating. We all need to help and support each other in these hard times. So firstly, I just want to say, that um, anybody out there that is trying estrogen or combination HRT for the first time, don't worry, it takes a while to kick in. I also have noticed through various people sending me messages about what they're taking and how much they're taking and the amounts that they're taking, that again, I'm not a doctor, but it seems to me that many, many doctors are prescribing a very low dose of estrogen and progesterone to start off with. But what I don't understand is the point of it is that you want to give you enough to get you back to normal. So if after a couple of weeks you are not back to normal, go and ask for more. It's not that you're asking for more to um, feel extra special human. You're just asking to feel normal. I was still sweating and I had my estrogen upped a little bit, but I got started on quite a hefty whack, but I had to go private because I couldn't get it. I know I'm very, very fortunate to be able to do that, but I do want to try and help other women via my experience. So if you're not getting enough, if you've still got symptoms, that means you're not getting enough, up your dose, go and see the doctor and get your dose increased. Chimanita777 says, you are so right. I'm very vocal about my struggle with menopause. Oh, this was why, that, but there's still so much stigma. I think that there's so much stigma because perimenopause and the menopause are still associated with drying up and with aging. And when I started my perimenopausal symptoms at 44, and when I slowly started thinking, probably by the time I was 45, my God, maybe this is like the menopause, I was so ashamed. And it wasn't necessarily that anybody was shaming me about it. It was me. I felt that it was a sign that I was finished. And I don't know whether I felt that because of society. I don't know whether I felt that because nobody talked about it. I mean, I think probably it is to do with the fact that women hadn't discussed it in front of me as a girl growing up. I'd never heard about it. And I suppose from never hearing about it, from it never being in my, in my family's kind of chat at the dinner table or anything, 
It made me feel that I shouldn't talk about it, that it was something that we just pretended didn't happen. But actually, you know, I think we're all discovering now, the more we talk about something, the better it is. My daughters and my son know a lot about perimenopause, menopausal symptoms, hormones, that there's no shame in it. And as I've got older, and especially since I've passed 50, I have realised that there's quite a good reason why women... My grandmother used to call it the change because it does signify a change in your life, but it's a good one because there comes a sense of freedom, a sense of looking forward to the next chapter and what can I do with it? A sense of, you know, I've still got this. I'm going to do something amazing, start a business. Let's do something. Let's volunteer. Suddenly you get this kind of new zest for life. But what will really help that new zest for life is HRT. And I've got to say that I think the other thing is that I, I spent a long time pussyfooting around trying to not promote HRT because I was worried about doing it because I felt like I was telling people that they should just HR, get, take HRT and get cancer. I now realise from everything that I've learned from Dr. Louise Newsom, really, mostly, but I am going to promote HRT because HRT has enormous health benefits. And I know I've said this ad infinitum, but here are a few of them, right? So HRT will... For starters, lower your risk of osteoporosis, lower your risk of heart disease, lower your risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, and lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. It's been shown to be more effective at fighting heart disease than statins, and one in seven of us are going to get breast cancer anyway, regardless of anything. One in seven of us are gonna get it. If you do get it and you're taking HRT, you have a greater chance of survival from it. So these health benefits, they're crazy. And you know, it carries a lower risk than drinking a glass of wine a day. It is safer than taking the pill. And we, we give out the pill like it's Smarties. We don't have this enormous health risks and everything. We're taking the pill. It, they don't give you two months worth of the pill and make you keep coming back all the time for, health checks all the time, which they do when you take HRT. You know, I don't know, it's just very frustrating. Love and peace. I had no idea I had menopause. Luckily, I only got hot flushes here and there, completely lost my sex drive, which cost me my marriage. Didn't take HRT, as doctor never asked me or told me about it. I know I sound totally stupid, but I'm actually educated. You don't stand stupid at all. Put on a little bit of weight around my tummy. Now I'm 60, but look 40. Gone back to normal for real. I guess our bodies are all different. All I need now is a new man. Can anyone help? Well, if that is my question, you've come to the right girl. I don't know if you remember, but in uh, the late 90s, I happened to do one of the greatest dating shows of all time, Street Mate. So we could do a menopausal Street Mate. It's called Street Mate F*** Off. <laughs> I make myself laugh. Um, no, I mean, that sounds amazing because you just got through it, right? And that is good. Uh, it's really good. But I would still, even if you're going through it and you haven't really got that many symptoms and you think you're going to be okay, I would still go on HRT because of the benefits. Um, but that is a very personal, a personal thing. Carol Ann Stratton says, wow, just watch this and have subscribed to your channel. <gasps> Thanks, Carol Ann. I feel like you're take it, talking to your best mate. Really late to you as a 58 year old woman, myself, who's been going through menopause for six years. Totally agree with your opinion of HRT. Best thing I ever did was talk to my lovely female GP. Took a while to get HRT to suit me, but my goodness, it's brilliant. Thanks for opening up this topic for us women. Carol Zahn, I just wanna to say to you, the interesting thing is that sometimes, I mean, not to you, but everybody listening, you've got to find the right HRT for you. So maybe a patch doesn't agree with you, try the gel. If the gel doesn't agree with you, try the spray. If, you're, if you've got a dry vagina or vaginal atrophy, try the gel, which carries no extra risk at all of anything. The vaginal um, pessary, that's what I'm talking about for uh, vaginal atrophy and it works a treat, it's amazing. So yes, Carol's Anne, you are absolutely correct. It's, it's amazing. I know I'm an advocate for HRT, but I'm, I don't think you all have to go on it. I just want to de-demonize it because it's been demonized for too long and it really can significantly change women's lives. But thanks for being part of the conversation. We're coming back with a second documentary. Let me know what you want me to talk about. I'm gonna keep all of these questions and uh, raise these in the documentary as well and talk about it. And I'm also going to yeah, just say thank you for being part of the conversation because 
we, we need to talk more and we need to stigmatise it less and we need our kids to know everything there is about the menopause before they get to it. But thanks and lots of love. I hope you found this helpful. Ah.